Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and today's video is all about color management in converted Epson printers. So this is a regular Epson printer, and I've put sublimation ink in here to turn it into a sublimation printer, but that's not what it was designed to do. If you are having color issues with your Sawgrass or your Epson F170, which is a sublimation printer, reach out to Sawgrass or Epson because they should be able to help you with your color management issues. But if you have a converted printer, Epson's not going to do anything for you because you put ink in there that is not designed for this machine. Let's start with the tail of two donuts. So this is the same exact file. The one on the right had no color management and the one on the left has color management. And you can totally see the difference. The one over here on the right is way too pink, way too orange, and the one over here looks like a chocolate sprinkled donut like it's supposed to look. So why might color vary so much? The biggest reason is the color profile within your computer. So basically this printer does not know it has sublimation ink in it, so it's laying down ink as though it were the actual Epson ink that came with the printer. But you put sublimation ink in there, it doesn't know that. So we basically have to put a small piece of code called an ICC profile into our computer to tell it to lay down the ink differently. So that's the biggest reason you are probably having color management issues. But there are a few other reasons as well. Sublimation crafting has all sorts of variables. So there are so many ways that your color can go wrong. You may find that the color lays down on different brands of paper. You may find that different types of blanks hold color differently. You may also find that your software matters. The way that software renders colors can change. So you may print something in Photoshop and it does one way and you print it in a different program and it's just slightly different. Your heat press might matter. So say you have a regular heat press and you press one image and then you go to press that same exact image onto a mug, the mug press may actually change the color just a bit as well. You may also find that you're having issues with environmental factors. Um, if you have high heat or high humidity, that can affect your color. So if you do have issues with those things, you wanna be storing your sublimation prints somewhere that is dry and cool if possible. There are also variations between what you see on your monitor and what you get out of your printer. Your monitor is RGB and your printer is CMYK. So the colors on your monitor are being made with three colors of light, red, green, and blue. And the colors in your printer are being made with four colors of ink, um, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. So being able to render what you see on your screen through your printer can be difficult. There is more luminosity in a screen. You can get neon colors on a screen that you just can't create with these four inks. So if you're really struggling with the color that you see on your screen not coming in the printer, it could also be that your printer just can't make those colors. It just can't um, create that same luminosity that you see on a screen. You may also be having monitor calibration issues. So I can't tell you how to calibrate your monitor because every monitor is different, but you may wanna go online and find the instructions for calibrating your monitor so that it renders its color accurately so what's coming out of the printer matches it properly. All of that is to say that sublimating with a converted printer requires a lot of testing. So I've said this before in other videos, but get yourself a cheap couple yards of polyester fabric and test your prints before you put them on your blanks. This is such a cheaper way to do this than ruining a bunch of blanks trying to get the right color. So you can see here, just right at the top, my first two prints that I ever did here, um, I wanted this pink color, but I had this orange color and I was like, this is not anywhere close to the pink that is in the file. Um, but I was able to install an ICC profile and I got the pink that I wanted. One more example, these are ornaments. Over here on my right, you can see that this ornament is very, very teal. Um, it's also oversaturated. It's got a lot of green in the background. It's not supposed to have that. This one is so much better. It has the correct color of the wood in the background. The trees look great. Um, this is the difference between installing a color profile and not having a color profile. Let's dig into those ICC profiles a little bit more. The first question is, do you need an ICC profile? I have linked to a printer test sheet in the description below that you can go ahead and print out and press on your fabric or whatever you're testing on. If you like that color, good, turn this video off, go sublimate, have a great time. But if you're struggling with this color, let's try an ICC profile. An ICC profile is basically just a tiny bit of computer code that tells your printer to lay down the ink differently than it would with its original ink. Do note that ICC profiles can have both a .icc or .icm file extension. So if you're out there looking for ICC profiles and you only see .icm, same thing, go ahead and use those. Each ICC profile is specifically built for three variables, your printer, the ink, and the type of paper. I'm gonna be honest though, I don't think that most of the ICC profiles floating around there really take that much account um, of the paper you are using. So if you find a profile that has the right printer and the right ink, but the wrong paper, go ahead and try it. So where do you even find an ICC profile? This is the biggest and most frustrating question, I will be honest. 
Um, you'd think that with all of the sublimation ink out there that um, people are making to put in this printer that they would have ICC profiles for them. They don't. It's very frustrating. Um, some companies do, but a lot of them don't. So I've got a couple options for you. The first is to go to my Google Drive. I have been collecting an assortment of ICC profiles over the last two years, and I keep them all in this Google Drive. You can download them from there and try them out. If you have an ICC profile that's not in my drive, I would love if you would email me at hello at heyletsmakestuff.com, send me that file, I'll put it in my drive so that more people can use it. If you don't find an ICC profile in there that will work, you can try Googling your printer and the type of ink you're using and see if the manufacturer might have one available. And you can always reach out to the manufacturer and see if they can create one for you. Um, I don't think people have had the best luck with this, but it is an option, might as well give it a try. Finally, you don't actually have to use a specific ICC profile for your printer and your ink. Um, I always tell people to start there because I think that's probably the best place to start. However, you may not be able to find one or the one you have might not work. For example, I use Hippo Ink in my Epson 2760 and I couldn't find a profile for it when I got this printer. So I tried the Epson 4700 Hippo um, ICC profile and it totally worked. Great color out of this printer. So if you're struggling to find an ICC profile for your specific printer and ink, go ahead and try some others because one of them very well might work. I just threw a lot at you about color management, so let's pop over to our computers to see how to install these profiles on a Mac and PC. I wanna give a huge shout out to my friend Angie from the Country Sheet Cottage um, for helping me with the PC portion of this. I'm a Mac user and have been for years, um, but there are specific things you need to do on a PC that are different. So all the screen shares here are from Angie's computer. Let's start with the PC. Like I said, all of this is on Angie's computer, so I'm just narrating what she's doing here. Let's start by actually installing the ICC profile. So she has this Hippo Epson ET2760 profile um, downloaded and unzipped. Installing it is super easy. Just right click, click install profile, and it will be added to all of her other ICC profiles. Once that profile is installed, you can use it in all sorts of different programs. There are some programs like Photoshop here that make it very easy. So if you wanna print this image, go to print, and then Photoshop gives you some options. You'll choose your printer, and then under color handling, you'll choose Photoshop manages colors, and there you can just select your ICC profile. Doing this in Photoshop and some of these other more robust programs make choosing an ICC profile really easy. Now, if you want to use another program that doesn't have that dropdown, you can. Um, it is just a little bit more convoluted. So you need to go into your color management window. So this can be most easily found by going to your start menu and uh, searching for color management. Then in color management, you're going to go ahead and uh, use the dropdown to select your printer. So here you can see that her Epson 4700 has its original ICC profiles for the Epson printer installed. Now we need to add the ICC profiles that we installed so we can use them with this printer. Click add and then scroll down to the one you installed. So for, in this case, it's that 4700. And you'll see here now that there are actually two profiles installed. We have the original Epson as well as the Hippo Inc. profile. So we will need to delete that original Epson profile. You can try and delete the second one, but it actually gets deleted with the first one. So you'll get this error. Um, just ignore that for now. Then make sure you have the use my settings for this device box checked and that you have the profile set to manual. Then set that as the default profile for your printer. Then if you're in a program like Google Docs that doesn't have that dropdown to select the ICC profile, you can still use it. When you print your file, click more settings and then choose print using system dialog. Then you can select your printer. And then Angie likes to make a few selections here change the paper type to matte, like I mentioned before, change the quality to high, and then go up to more options, take off high speed and mirror your image so that it prints correctly, then click custom, go to advanced, and here choose ICM. This is basically telling your computer to default to the ICC profile we have installed for this particular printer. Click okay, and then click okay again, and then you can print your file. Now let's install an ICC profile on a Mac. So I have my ICC profile here saved to my Mac. In a separate window, I'm going to open up the Color Sync Library. To do this, you need to go to your hard drive, click Library, and then click Color Sync, and then click Profiles. 
and then you can drag this ICC profile into your uh, ColorSync folder here. Now it is available as one of my ICC profiles. If you want to use an ICC profile with a more robust program that allows you to choose ICC profiles like Photoshop, it's very easy. Click Print, and then you can choose your printer up here under the printer. And then instead of printer manages colors here under color handling, choose Photoshop manages colors. Then you can choose that profile that you downloaded. So for me, it's this hippo profile. And then you can make whatever other print setting changes you want to make and click print. If you want to use an ICC profile in a program that doesn't have that drop down like Photoshop, um, you can easily do that on a Mac. It's actually a little bit easier than a PC. I'm in Google Docs, so I'm going to go ahead and print my file. And then under more settings, I'm going to choose print using system dialog. And then the print dialog box will open. You want to make sure you have your correct printer set up here. And then to choose your ICC profile, all you have to do is go here to this drop down in the middle, select color matching, select color sync, and choose your profile. It's really easy. If you don't see this color matching drop down, it's probably because your printer was installed by your Mac without the correct drivers. So if you don't see this color matching option, go to the Epson website and download the drivers from there. Then uninstall your printer and reinstall it using the full drivers from Epson, and then you should be able to see this color matching drop down. Okay, that wasn't too bad, right? It's pretty easy. I hope you can give it a shot. There are, however, other ways to improve your color without an ICC profile, so let's take a look at a few of those. The first is to change your paper setting to like a high quality presentation matte paper. Um, the ink lays down differently on a matte paper and both Angie and I have found that that works a lot better for sublimation. You can also manually change the print settings, so let's pop back onto the computer and look at a few ways to do that. If you want to make some changes to your color without using an ICC profile, you can do it like this. Again, this is Angie's computer, so I'm sort of just narrating along with what she's doing. So go ahead and click print. Make sure your printer is selected and then go to more settings and print with that system dialog box. From here, you'll want to choose your printer. And again, Angie's makes some uh, changes here. She likes that um, presentation matte paper, high quality. And then in the more options tab, take off high speed and mirror your image. And then go to custom again Go to advanced and from here you can choose color controls and this gives you a lot of options here you can change it to rgb you can change the gamma you can change the uh, brightness and contrast and saturation um, and you can use this kind of awkward color picker over here to choose your colors if something's too pink for example but using the slide bar is actually a lot easier you can still choose brightness, contrast, and saturation, but then you can also use these sliders to change how much blue, magenta, and yellow are in your photos. It's very similar on a Mac, so when you go to print your file, choose more settings, and then choose that print dialog box. From here, you can choose color options. Color options won't be available if you have um, that color sync button checked from earlier, so make sure that's unchecked underneath um, color matching here, but go to color options, and then you can go here to manual settings, click the advanced settings drop down, and here you can change to RGB, you can change all of your brightness, contrast, saturation, um, and then you can change your colors here as well. So for example, if I thought this photo was a little bit red, I could go down here to the magenta and pull that down just a bit to try and make their skin tones look a little bit better. It goes a little yellow to me. Overall, this can really help you fix some of your color issues, but you have to do it with every single um, image, which is sort of annoying. Then click print and you're good to go. And finally, there might be a couple of pressing problems that contribute to poor color. Let's take a look at a few of them. First up is overcooking. So if you overcook something, your blacks will turn out brown. So I just made this yesterday um, and I completely forgot to change the settings on my heat press and cooked it probably twice as long as it needed to be. Um, and all of his little mustache, eyebrows, and belt should be black, they're brown, I overcooked it. If you find that your blacks are tilting toward green, you've probably undercooked it. So give it a little bit longer. And then finally, if you find things are a little bit faded or not working, you may need to press longer or with more pressure. And that is color management for converted printers. I know this is a lot, so if you have any questions or if you're struggling, go ahead and leave a comment. We also have a Sublimation Made Simple Facebook group where you can get help, and I will link to that as well below. 
If you found this video helpful, or maybe you just like to hear me rambling on about color management, hit that like button. If you want more weekly sublimation content, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week.